to nine on the positive side. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thanks so much for joining us this weekend. We're making a return trip to one of our brew to you stops from a couple of summers ago. It's a local craft brewery that's changed quite a bit since then. Here's Ken Watlington with a look at how. So this is a Belgian triple. North Carolina's craft beer scene continues to grow. Oh, I love it. They're everywhere. And Craven County's first brewery is growing too. Everybody's really embraced this place. This is Brewery 99's new 2,500 square foot tap room. When did you get it open and what's the response been like? We opened May 1st and there was a, there was a block party going on that day and uh, there were thousands of people that came through here. It was a, it was a great response. We first introduced you to owner Pete Fry in the summer of 2021. Back then, visitors experienced a much different Brewery 99 just across the parking lot. Number one, we've been without a tap room for three years. We've been hanging out in the backyard where we brew, basically exposed to all the elements. We're just glad to be inside. No mosquitoes, AC. It doesn't matter if it rains, so we're pretty thrilled. And the new space is bringing in folks from across New Bern and well beyond. And I pulled up my GPS, never been here. I like going to breweries, so we wanted to stop in and see what it was. I love it. I got the smoke lager. Excellent. But there's more here than the 28 taps available. There's an on-site bakery to feature beer-friendly foods. I was a baker before I was a brewer. And Pete truly does it all. It's the hands-on approach that's helped him build his business, quite literally. I was able to build this building. I was the general contractor to build this building. Okay, so, so not only are you helping to brew the beer, you, you built the building. Yes, <laughs> I was the general contractor. He is one of the greatest visionaries I've ever worked for and with. <clears throat> Don't want to get emotional about it, but he's just, he beats to his own drum. Um, whatever he touches, it really just, it turns into this cool thing that people just want to be a part of. And what Pete started in a tiny 400 square foot building a few blocks away in 2015 continues to grow today. I owe it a lot to New Bern, the city of New Bern, the people of New Bern, and this whole community has been very supportive. We've been able to do, to dream, dream up anything and be able to do it. In New Bern, Ken Watlington. Nine on your side. Don't you mean 99? Nine on your side. And while the tap room at Brewery 99 is new, the way they brew beer is the same, just one barrel at a time. Ken and Pete talk about that and so much more on a new episode of the People and Places Extra podcast. And you can listen anytime over on the WNCT podcast networks. And if you have a great idea for a future People and Places segment, well, reach out to Ken through email or on social media. A new bakery is now open in LaGrange. It's called Grounded and Baked. They describe themselves as home bakers and they make desserts just like their grandma taught them. The grandma we're talking about is Norma Vinson. She says her grandson decided to open the bakery to show off just how good her treats were. And she's glad he did. I'm very proud. I have, I'm so proud of my grandson. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I really am. He has taken over all my recipes and just gone with them. I hadn't found anything wrong yet. <laughs> it really is a sweet story. You can hear more from Vincent and the owner of Grounded and Baked over on our website, WNCT.com. It'll be on the online originals page. It's one of the smallest sit down sandwich shops in North Carolina, but as Chad Tucker shows us, it's full of down home people and some good food. Y'all got one order of fries, right? Yeah. And that's the only thing I've ever called it. And everybody around here, town here has called it the squeeze box. Hey, how's it going? There you go. As you can tell, you really have to squeeze in. It's the longest running restaurant or business in Pilot Mountain, 71 years. Squeeze on in. It's lunchtime. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm having to move out of the way. At one of the smallest sandwich shops in North Carolina. We got a total of 11 bar stools. And we got three other seats over there. If we have to, we'll flip them up. Bobby, just one fry. Jerry and Tabitha Snyder are serving up their drink. Two chicken salads and a hot dog. Along with a side of local history. It was built to, if it didn't go, they was going to pack it up and move it somewhere else. But those roots 
have grown deep in this corner over the past 70 years. They come in and that's the first thing they say, it's so small in here. And of course they comment on us walking back and forth. Some of these down here. I'm because he's down. up against the grill and I have to squeeze right behind him to get through. 11 bar stools and it's, it gets tight. The Snyders, now the fourth owner. You need your mayonnaise? Living a big dream. Well, I'm a lot of my customers, they like it. In this small, humble place. Thank you, Joey. The main thing is, this place is family. They know their customers. Hey, Jim. <laughs> by name. Come on in, Linda. And their order. That's all he has to say. Do you want your usual? Yep, okay, see you in a minute. It's how you treat folks. It's a bacon double cheeseburger. That you fill. With blown in egg. Our family. Double tomato, mayonnaise, mustard. Just like Jerry said, everybody that comes in, they're our family. We love them just like they're ours. Squeezing in close in Pilot Mountain. See here, I ain't got about two or three steps right here in this corner. North Carolina. Everybody that comes in, they're our family. We love them just like they're ours. I'm Chad Tucker. It's just fun. I love it. Next, we're taking an inside look at the world of bees and a teenager's passion for beekeeping. She may be only 17, but this young beekeeper is seasoned in her skills. John Lee takes us to Tryon. I really encourage people to get out. In Tryon, North Carolina, we can take a picture. the backdrop in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains is the bee's knees. Uh, now would be a good time to suit up. You're gonna need a hat so you don't get your face stuck. Smoke them if you've got them. Carla Robertson is a young beekeeper with an old soul. It's like you get in there with them and just, it's calm, you hear the buzzing. So actually those are the queen cells right there. Already a veteran apiculturist and she's just 17. Here's your queen bee right here, she's right here. The way that God created them, there's just so much to constantly learn. So if you look right here, there's a, a drone emerging right there. She has no qualms of being something of a bee geek, also known as beak. When you do bees, it's so like the satisfaction of, oh, I raised this. Carla represents the next generation of beekeepers, and her goal now is to generate buzz about the importance of these pollinators. Hey guys, Carla here with North Carolina State Beekeeping Association. She's an ambassador via social media as Henderson County Beekeepers Association's summer intern. So I'm grafting queens on some of my big projects this summer. Um, so we we'll maybe do a video on it so you guys can go check that out too. And we're super excited. Carla also shared videos as Honey Show reporter at this month's State Beekeepers Conference. Kids are seeing that, oh, it's not that scary. Oh, it's not that bad. Someone else is doing it. It's my age. That's the sort of message Carla could have used several years ago when 27 bee stings, but who's counting, nearly drove her away. By like the second year, I was done with it. Carla's dad motivated her. If you just give up when things get difficult, then really you're not going to achieve anything. I didn't really have a passion for it until it really got ignited, and then I was like, this is what I'm going to do. She's made a beeline toward that passion to teach Gen Z why bees are so vital to our planet. She's right up there walking on the top of the frame. In Tryon, John Lee, Queen City News. In Kansas, a farmer there has come up with a spectacular gift for his wife to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. Sunflowers for as far as the eye can see. Guess how many there are? One million to be exact around there. Now, the sunflowers are for Lee Wilson's high school sweetheart and wife, Renee. Lee secretly got his sons to help plant them in May. You know, what's a guy get his gal on their 50th? And I, I put a lot of thought into it, and, and uh, she always liked sunflowers. And I thought this is the year to plant sunflowers, so we planted her 80 acres of sunflowers. It made me feel very special, and it's, it can have been a more perfect anniversary gift than a field of sunflowers. I guess if anyone needs any anniversary gifts, sunflowers might be one. The sunflower field has drawn in people from all over Kansas to take pictures and experience the state flower in full bloom. And when it comes to anniversaries, some places have special meaning. It's the reason why one couple chose a popular fast food chain to celebrate. Riley Ginter has this story. It's date night for Bonnie and Lloyd Reynolds at their neighborhood Chick-fil-A. We come here every week. Just the two of us. 
But this week, there's a little more fanfare. The couple, both in their 80s, are celebrating their 65th wedding anniversary. We've gotten older, but we've grown together. I'm still in love with you. They're such a pleasant couple. Restaurant employees look forward to their weekly date night tradition. When you see them, the room just brightens up. Their love for each other is so evident. And they wanted to make sure Bonnie and Lloyd's anniversary was extra special. With flowers, candles, and friends and family on hand to help celebrate. Celebrate. And there's when they just first got married. The couple even brought along some mementos, like their marriage certificate and family photos of their three sons, even a picture from their second date. I was 14 years old. Lloyd is more than willing to share his secrets with the younger generation. He even has a top 10 list on how to maintain a happy marriage. The first one is don't never yell at each other unless the house is on fire. It's a love that began back in their teens. And I knew right away it was he was different. Still strong more than six decades later. I'm just really thankful that I have her. She's a blessing in my life. It really is sweet. A Colorado veteran got a sweet surprise for his 100th birthday. Retired U.S. Naval Commander Kurt Voorhees from Denver received a bundle of love notes and handwritten birthday cards. It's from a group called Nothing But Love Notes, which organized the campaign. He says the notes aren't just for him, they're for all veterans. I'm sure there's money enclosed in all of mo most of them. I didn't earn it really. I didn't um, deserve it, but uh, it's uh, representative. I will be the representative for lots of other guys that had a much harder time than I. The organization Nothing But Love Notes says they believe Voorhees and his wife Connie are one of the last married couples over 100 years of age from World War II. Connie also received a bundle of love notes as she turned 100 this past April. If you're looking for more go good news, go to WNCT.com. There you'll find these stories and more under the nine on the positive side tab. You can find that all under features. We also have all of our nine on the positive side shows there for you to watch too. Coming up next, it's a story that's all about building connections and bringing positivity to one town. How it's also spreading here in the East too. One place in Pennsylvania has a new resident. Some say she showed up mysteriously, but she's now found a home and is well loved. As Maggie Smolka explains, all that love helps her grow and she's spreading love to all who walk by. Sometimes the simplest things can bring us the most joy. Your morning coffee or tea, a good book, a walk on a beautiful day and snakes. No, 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 I don't mean real snakes. I mean, Rhonda, the rock snake. She's been spreading smiles since June of this year. And while that's not a whole lot of time, it's been enough to bring this community together. There's a lot of people who have been checking on her. Yeah. So it's really nice. Rhonda sits around the diamond in St. Mary's. She's hundreds of rocks long, but how exactly does she grow? Well, that's up to the residents, like these kiddos who paint unique designs to make her bigger and bigger. Jim DeLulo had the right idea, bringing rocks for everyone to use. My wife and I thought it would be a great idea. Let's set some rocks down there in a bucket and watch it grow. It's a treat walking past her. It's easy to do. Anyone can participate and anyone can enjoy it, so it's been a great time. You'll get to see some fun, colorful art as well as uplifting messages like encourage one another, spread kindness like confetti, and be the reason someone smiles today. Some nearby businesses even calling Rhonda a close friend. After all, they check on her and counter rocks about every day. So this is a boa constrictor. Kylie with Keystone Cold Blooded even brought a real snake along. I thought it was only natural that I bring a real snake to a rock snake. The only question we all have now is who brought her to St. Mary's? We suspect somebody. Um, they'll never come out and actually admit to it, but it's nice to keep it anonymous. Just it adds a little bit to the mystery. While Rhonda's creator remains a mystery, her mission of happiness is well known. 
bringing smiles, kindness, and positivity to all who walk by her. And it really is a cool idea. And guess what? Here in the East, we have our own rock snake, too, in Kinston. We first told you about this a few weeks ago. Lisa Nolan lives in Kinston, and she saw the project on Pinterest and was inspired to bring it over to the city. Now, this snake is called Davis. You see right there on your screen. It is on Blunt Street. Nolan says all you have to do is paint a rock and add it to the collection. You can learn more about the story over on our online originals page. And if you have a story idea, you can send it on over to us. We want to have hear about all the good things happening where you live. Just email newsdesk at WNCT.com. You can also reach out to me on Facebook or over on Twitter. And coming up next, a born and bred New Yorker has made quite a name for herself in the pool. She pushes herself in regular workouts. That story is coming up. In New York, one woman has made quite a name for herself. She's pushing herself in her regular workouts, but it's not how fast she swims, it's how long she's been doing it. Mr. G reports. I arrived in Lifetime in Dumbo, Brooklyn to see a unique workout. Vivian Levy's doing laps in the pool, six days a week, 45 minutes a day. <laughs> no big deal, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right? Except Vivian is 104 years old. I love swimming. What does it do for you? Makes me happy. Do you remember the very first experience when you swam? Sure. What was it? Well, my mother took us to Coney Island. Six years old. That would be roughly about 1925. She and her sisters here were part of a family of 10 kids. Margaret lived to 107. Dolly, the baby of the family, is 98. Vivian got a chemistry degree from Brooklyn College and had three kids of her own. She met her husband at a peace rally. I taught elementary school. Right. She's the neighborhood icon. Zelda is her best friend here at the pool. She's full of joy and she's grateful. She's grateful every day for everything. She knows how to make friends. You're a kid. <laughs> you mean that, don't you? Of course. You and she is a legend in the pool. I'm a little bit jealous of her, to be honest. Uh, I mean, she's she's ripping those laps. 104 and still faster than me? It's ridiculous. How have you picked good people in your life? Well, I'm not going to find bad people. If Vivian has a secret, it's to be active and social. Just keep on struggling and keep on meeting with people, taking part in activities. Don't stay home in bed. There you go. <laughs> Very nice. She'll be back in the pool in the morning. She's really just incredible. And 104. Thank you so much for joining us for Nine on the Positive Side this weekend. One last thing to show you, this teenager who flipped out for her new world record. Take a look at that. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you next time.